バイリンガルウェブマガジン DIG 東京のディレクターを務めるカズーこと G ・カズオペニアです。英語力がどんどんつく学習法へようこそ。DIG 東京は8つのカテゴリーのコラムを日本語と英語で併記しているウェブマガジンです。英語力がどんどんつく学習法は僕がこれまでの翻訳や通訳の仕事を通して培ったさまざまな英語上達についてのノウハウをレッスン形式にまとめたもので、読む、書く、聞く、話すという4つのスキルが身につくと思います。ディグ東京のビジネスやライフスタイルに関するコラムのテキストを用いるのでビジネスですぐに使える英語力や旅行や海外での生活に役立つ英会話力がつきますディグ東京のテキストと YouTube の動画を使ったこのレッスンを繰り返すことで大学受験のための英語力はもちろんのこと TOEIC、TOEFL、英検などの試験のための英語力もどんどんつくことでしょうではこのレッスンの方法について説明しますまずは DIG 東京のテキストのページと YouTube の動画をタブや別ウィンドウを使って両方ともすぐ見られる状態にしてくださいそうしたら DIG 東京の日本語のテキストだけをまず先に読んでください次に英語のテキストだけを読んでください英語のテキストでわからない英単語や熟語をネット検索を使って自分で調べてみましょうもちろんわからない日本語があればそれもチェックしてください次に英語のテキストをもう一度読んでみてください。これで予習が終了です。ここからこの動画によるレッスンを行います。この YouTube の動画を再生させて英語を聞きながら DIG 東京の英語テキストを目読してください。次に英語テキストを見ないでこの YouTube の動画だけを見ながら英語をよく聞いてください。最後に YouTube の音声に合わせて英語テキストを音読してください。以上のステップを繰り返すことで、英語の表現力、読解力、ヒアリング力、スピーキング力が確実に上達するはずです。2回目以降のレッスンの際には、この画面の下にあるもっと見るを開いて、テキストの朗読のところをクリックしてください。すぐにテキスト本文を読み上げる部分に行けます。今回は Language Ensemble 17 SNS 英語術 on NHK ハッシュタグ Wedding Fail Episode 世界発信 SNS 英語術の6月28日放送分で取り上げたテーマ「ハッシュタグウェディングフェイル」について書きました楽しみながらレッスンしましょう1 Our theme for this week ハッシュタグウェディングフェイル To celebrate June Bride season the theme on the show this week was ハッシュタグウェディングフェイル We looked at various mistakes and faux pas people have made at weddings Footnote A word on the phrase June Bride. The name of the sixth month of the year comes from Juno, the Greek goddess of marriage and childbirth. In Europe, June is the beginning of the summer dry season, and the weather is generally mild and stable. It is considered the ideal time for regional festivals and events, such as outdoor weddings. Wimbledon, one of tennis's big four tournaments, is also held in London during this period. On the other hand, in Japan, June coincides with the rainy season. Due to the humid climate, facilities without proper air conditioning, and thick, heavy traditional Japanese dress, the season has long been unpopular with couples looking to get married. However, in the latter 1960s, the Japanese bridal industry began promoting the June bride concept, convincing the Japanese public that getting married in June was stylish and something to aspire to. We looked at hashtag wedding fail tweets that were about useless grooms, holier than thou priests. Guests that come only for the open bar, and a bridesmaid that wanted the bouquet just a little too much. We also featured hashtag Bridezilla, tweets from women willing to do whatever it takes to make their fairy tale weddings come true. The word fail is most often used as a verb that means to be unsuccessful or unable to do something, shippai suru or shikujiru in Japanese. The standard noun form is failure. However, in recent years, it has become an informal term for embarrassing mistakes, gaffes, and blunders. For example, fashion no nos can be called fashion fails, and marketing campaigns that inadvertently end up being offensive or inappropriate can be called marketing fails. In that sense, the English you encounter so often on Japanese signs and products are English fails. It's become a thing on social media to share fails of all kinds. Footnote. English is a slang term for misused or corrupted English words and phrases seen in Japan and more generally throughout Asia. In Language Ensembles 
I wrote about how we live in times when it isn't clear if we take photos and post to social media in order to commemorate something we did, or if we do something in order to have something to post to social media. The term Instagrammable is emblematic of just that, as is its Japanese equivalent, Instabae, which was chosen as one of Japan's Vogue words of 2017. When you get lost in the rabbit hole of social media, you start to become obsessed with taking cooler, more stylish photos. You artificially manufacture the self-image or lifestyle you want people to think you have, with the ultimate goal to garner likes and make your friends and followers on social media feel jealous. Proposals and weddings provide a wealth of photo opportunities that are perfect for that objective. There is perhaps no one on this earth who knows all of that better than Kim Kardashian, queen of reality TV and social media. Kardashian wed rapper Kanye West in 2014. Plans to book famed photographer Annie Leibovitz for their wedding ceremony fell through, and they ended up flying in a British 22-year-old that they had found on Instagram just a few days prior. In order to give a photo of the couple kissing in front of an elaborate display of flowers and Annie Leibovitz-style aesthetic, Kardashian reportedly spent four days of her honeymoon editing the photo herself. Kanye vocally vented his frustration some time later at an event. Hashtag Kim oh no. Footnote. Kim Kardashian is an American reality TV personality and model. She catapulted to fame with the reality TV show Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Footnote. Kanye West is an American rapper, hip-hop musician, and music producer. He has won 21 Grammy Awards to date. My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Kanye's fifth solo album presents his ruminations on fame and wealth. He won a Grammy Award for Best Rap Album. Footnote. Annie Leibovitz is an American photographer. She became highly regarded for her portraits she took of famous subjects for magazines like Rolling Stone and Vanity Fair. Annie Leibovitz. Portraits, 2005-2016. to This book is a collection of Leibovitz portraiture between 2005 and 2016. Ironically, whether it's a wedding ceremony or a photo for social media, trying a little too hard to strive for perfection inevitably results in a fail. Mistakes and slip-ups are a part of life. While it's a good idea to do everything in your power to prevent those fails from happening, it's more important to cultivate a disposition that allows you to take fails in stride and find joy in dealing with the aftermath. How a couple deals with a hashtag wedding fail speaks volumes about their future. Some things you have to just laugh off together. 2. English and Japanese Terms Related to Weddings Next, a brief run-through of various words and idioms related to weddings in English and Japanese. First, a soulmate is called your umme no hito. And as there are no Japanese equivalents, you can describe Mr. Right as risou no dansei or otto ni suru no ni fusawashii dansei while Mrs. Wright is Risou no Jose or Tsuma ni suru no ni fusawashi Jose. A match made in heaven is Oniai no Kappuru. While you can characterize the relationship between a couple that deserves each other as Warenabe ni Tojibuta. This saying literally translates to a mended lid for a cracked pot. Once you've found your Mr. Wright or Mrs. Wright, next comes the proposal. The most straightforward way to say propose is proposu, but the more formal ask for someone's hand in marriage can be translated as aite ni kekkon no shoudaku wo motomeru. While a somewhat stilted translation of the more casual pop the question would be kekkon no moshide wo suru. Meanwhile, do I hear wedding bells is a question people ask to tease a friend who is utterly smitten or head over heels. In Japan, where the people are generally more bashful, the classic response to someone speaking fondly or bragging about the relationship is gochisousama, literally, thank you for the meal. In English, there are a number of colloquialisms for getting married, such as say I do or walk down the aisle. In Japanese, kekkonsuru is most common. That being said, the imagery of tying the knot or getting hitched also has significance in Japan. The character musubu means knot, and musubareru is a more poetic way of saying tying the knot. And speaking of walking down the aisle, the Japanese term for wedding aisle is virgin road, vajin rodo. While the word virgin did at one time refer to an unmarried woman, that use is seen today as archaic. Today the term usually refers to someone who has never had sexual intercourse. 
Weddings in Japan usually fall into one of three styles. Traditional Shinzen Shiki. Weddings are held at Shinto shrines. Secular or non-denominational Jinzen Shiki weddings have the guests serve as witnesses. And Kyokai Shiki weddings are held in a chapel with a pastor and more or less adhere to Christian wedding traditions. Ask a Japanese person to picture a wedding and they will likely picture a chapel. Again, most Japanese are not Christian and thus have little to no attachment to the religious significance of the wedding ceremony. The name Virgin Road was made up by the Japanese bridal industry to push the idea that brides should aspire to be pure and, well, virginal. But as premarital sex in Japanese society is not associated with sin, the name is clearly nothing more than a charade. What's more, the pastor that stands at the end of that Virgin Road is usually a part-time foreigner type with no formal training or qualifications other than the fact that they look the part by virtue of being a white foreigner. And given the fact that most Japanese tend to emphasize the reception over the ceremony, it remains a mystery to me how such posturing could constitute anyone's dream wedding. 3. Modern Marriages and Relationships Next, an overview of various English phrases used to describe marriages and relationships today. The term that seems most straightforward but is actually most troublesome is traditional marriage. For example, a traditional marriage in Japan evokes a man who rules the roost, the teishu kampaku stereotype, and a woman who is a good wife and wise mother, the ryosai kenbo stereotype. Alternatively, it could refer to what the Japanese call omiyai kekkon, an arranged marriage. In either case, in a more general sense, a traditional marriage in Japan is one that puts the family first, as opposed to an American marriage which puts the individual first. By contrast, the traditional marriage in the U.S. has different connotations. In Language and Ensemble 16, I wrote about the LGBTQ plus movement and the evolving language of how we define our sexuality, and by extension, our relationships. As a reaction to the fight for the right to gay marriage, some have begun using the term traditional marriage to differentiate opposite-sex marriages from same-sex marriages. In that usage, the word traditional implies an aversion to gay marriage. Related to the idea of traditional marriage is conventional marriage. In the West, a conventional marriage is a monogamous one, where two people pledge to love each other for the rest of their lives. By contrast, a marriage of convenience is one where a couple marries for financial or political gain, sometimes without their consent. This is where it gets a little complicated, because from a Westerner's perspective, a conventional Japanese marriage that puts the family's wishes above the individual's is a marriage of convenience. In recent years, more and more people are choosing not to marry. For personal, political, or ethical reasons, they take issue with or oppose the notion of a traditional or conventional marriage. A couple that is fully committed but not married usually refers to one another as a partner or life partner. A monogamous marriage is referred to by the stilted ippu ippuse in Japanese, while there is no particular term for a monogamous relationship outside of wedlock. Polygamy is fukukonse while polygyny is ippu tasaise. There is no equivalent for the term open relationship or open marriage, which refer to relationships where both partners agree that each can have sexual relations with others. And unsurprisingly, there is also no equivalent for the term monogamish, which refers to a mostly monogamous relationship where partners occasionally make exceptions. Perhaps tradition holds more sway in Japan than it does in the U.S., which is younger as a nation and founded on the idea of questioning tradition. 4. A Japanese Hashtag Wedding Fail As I mentioned on the show, I have never been to a wedding in the US. I have, however, been to a wedding or two in Japan. And on one instance, I committed a hashtag wedding fail so egregious, it makes me want to curl up and die just thinking about it. It happened several years ago when a Japanese friend of mine who was born and raised in the US married a Japanese man. Although my friend is Japanese by blood, her personality had always seemed to me more American, and I had heard that a number of her American friends were flying in to attend. All of this is to say that I wasn't sure what kind of traditional to expect, whether I should dress for an American wedding or a Japanese wedding. After talking with Scarlett, I decided to play it safe and wear a classic black suit and silver and navy regimental necktie. And this being Japan, I knew I should plan on bringing goshugi, gift money. 
I asked Big Brother where I should go to obtain crisp new paper bills, and he told me to go to the front desk of the venue. So on the day of the wedding, I arrived at the venue early and handed the clerk two old 10,000 yen bills. The clerk gave me a slightly puzzled look and asked, 20,000 yen, do I have the amount right? I thought the question was a bit odd, but I replied in the affirmative. When the clerk returned with my new bills, she asked me again, 20,000 yen, do I have that right? I had been afraid that 20,000 yen would be too small an amount for the occasion, but at the time I could not afford to give 30,000 or 40,000 yen. So I received my bills, tucked them away in the noshibukuro, traditional envelope that Scarlet had prepared for me, and headed for the reception desk. When I told Big Brother about this exchange a few days later, he burst into laughter. He explained to me that for wedding money gifts, numbers starting with an even number, in other words, numbers evenly divisible by two, were considered bad luck. Numbers such as three, which cannot be divided evenly in half, represent the idea that the couple will remain together forevermore. Intrigued, I did some research and found that belief had likely originated in the idea of yin and yang, imported to Japan from China. Even numbers were considered yin, dark and negative, while odd numbers were yang, bright and positive. People went out of their way to avoid even numbers for celebratory occasions. Soon I began to see it everywhere, such as in the Japanese traditional rite of passage for young children, shichigo-san, or seven, five, and three, and the fact that the Japanese like to conclude dinner parties and get-togethers with either a ipponjime, a three, 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 one hand-clapping pattern, or sanbonjime, that same pattern repeated three times. 5. My wardrobe for this episode Black suit by Global Style Pink button-down shirt by Difference Silver bow tie by Ralph Lauren White cufflinks Avignon by Paraboot Dark red long socks by Tabio Black glasses by Zoff Language and Ensemble 17 SNS Ego Jutsu on NHK Hashtag Wedding Fail Episode No Ego Tikisto Rodok Shimashita Ikaka de Shitaka Renai Kekkon Shiki Fufu ni Matsuaru Ego Hyogen to Nihongo Hyogen o Shokai Shimashita Saigo ni Boku Jishin ga Okashita Hashtag Wedding Fail ni Tsuite Fri Kari Mashita Kono Contents ga Kini Tara YouTube no Kono Doga no Midi Shita ni Aru Botan Kara Channel Toroku o Zehi Okanat Tu Kudasai テキストの最後にある Facebook、Twitter、Instagram のアイコンから d i g t o k y o の公式アカウントに入りフォローしてくださいご意見ご要望がありましたら YouTube や SNS のコメント欄にご記入ください www.digtokyo.jp